tick tock, tick tock, time is clicking and Tech Bridge is knocking on Lagos Television. You're welcome to Tech Bridge. This is a link, this is a platform that gives you all the enablement that you need to know in the world of technology. It's a marriage of business, idea, and process, like we spoke in one of our episodes. This is Tech Bridge on Lagos Television. My name is Tony Alagoke. You're welcome once again. Today, we are looking at artificial intelligence intelligence that is artificial in nature and we have experts in the world we have some of them in the country we have a lot of things that have been brought to this nation if you look at security you have artificial intelligence if you look at um, pilots you look at agricultural system you look at um, medical line you have artificial intelligence including your apps you have a lot of artificial intelligence embedded and i will show you one that will shock you that even artificial intelligence can behave like human being can think like human being can speak like human being can even reasoning and that is why they call artificial intelligence we need to go on quick break after which we come we'll be talking more about artificial intelligence you're welcome You're welcome from that short break, and um, I've told you that artificial intelligence is taking the space. You have some of them in the space itself, robotic. Some of them are satellite in nature. Now, you look at banditry, you look at Boko Haram, you look at terrorism. Artificial intelligence can be sort of things that can be used to uh, solve this problem because this will record, this will be in the space. You have drone, but some of them are artificial in nature, and we need to look at it. Not only that, even if you look at agricultural system, you have artificial intelligence taking space in this line. And um, my guest will be doing justice to that. I will quickly link you up with my guest on another platform so that at least we can delve into this topic and speak extensively about the world of artificial intelligence. technology could help me be anywhere I needed to be and speak any language I wanted. Well, it can. We are bringing together the power of mixed reality and Azure AI services to create a truly game-changing experience. What you're about to see is an exact hologram of me wearing the same outfit that we recently captured at a mixed reality studio. And I don't speak Japanese. But what if I wanted to deliver my keynote in Japanese? Using Azure AI technology, I can translate my English into Japanese and train it to sound exactly like me, the same voice tones, those same inflections. Now we've brought this together, my hologram and Azure AI, to show you what's possible. So first, I'm going to put on my HoloLens 2 here. And then we'll flip in the room to the special camera so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Let's get started. First, let me introduce you to Minnie Me. There she is, my perfect holograph. And thanks to the power of HoloLens 2, she just floats right with me. I'm literally holding my hologram, so natural. Now she's a little small to do a keynote. So let's get her up so she can do full-size Japanese keynote. Render keynote. Hologram になることには本当に驚くべきことがあります。私たちは最新の複合現実キャプチャ技術を使用し、私のホログラムを作成しています。実在の人物をホログラムとして見たことがあるかもしれませんが、私が実際に日本語を話しているのが新しいのです。私は日本語を話しませんが、私の声とホログラムは完璧な日本語で話しています。これはニューラルテキスト読み上げと呼ばれる最新の人工知能技術、いわゆるニューラル TTS を使用しています。私たちは自分の声の録音を使用し、私のように聞こえる私自身の個人的な音声署名を作成します。日本語からフランス語、ポルトガル語まで話せます。今、この技術は私たちが働き、遊び、生活する方法に関して、世界中の国境や障壁を取り除くことができると想像してみてください。まさに SF が現実になるところです。
This is mind-blowing technology. And what you just saw was my life-size hologram, my exact replica, rendered here in real time, speaking Japanese with my unique voice signature. To do this, we use mixed reality technology to create my hologram and render it here live. Then we use Azure speech-to-text capability and English transcription to get my speech. Then use Azure Translate to get the, the speech into Japanese. And finally, applied neural text-to-speech technology so it sounded exactly like me, just speaking Japanese. And the most amazing part? All of these technologies exist today. The future is here.
For millions of people all over the world, public transport is the primary means of getting from point A to point B. Incidents occur in these public spaces regularly and are often recorded by closed circuit TV cameras. But cameras can't prevent crime. Nonetheless, nowadays, fewer and fewer staff patrol platforms. Instead, security personnel monitor events from afar. But CCTV cameras record vast amounts of footage. It's impossible to check them all with the naked eye in real time. Aki Zaharia Menevides has a vision. He'd like to be able to separate dangerous situations from the flood of video footage using behavior patterns and movement analyses. In collaboration with psychologists, his team is designing an alarm system to send timely warnings when a situation is escalating out of control. We'd like to be able to recognize those situations in which one would need to step in or get involved. For example, when luggage is abandoned, that could possibly represent a danger. With around 900 million passengers a year, Berlin has one of the largest transport authorities in Europe. Despite the presence of CCTV, muggings and violent attacks haven't stopped. The cameras don't always have a preventive effect. The challenges for an automated system are enormous. It has to recognize dangerous situations without sounding too many false alarms. The solution is to program the system with a catalog of body movements and behavior patterns that indicate possible danger, like fights, crowds of people, abandoned luggage, or people prostrate on the ground. One possible scenario, an abandoned bag, contents unknown. In a test room, the team simulates the situation. An object is only registered as abandoned when nobody has been near it for some time. Intelligent video surveillance that spots acts of violence before it's too late. Although not everything can be monitored 100%, the developers hope it will make traveling on public transport a safer experience. Space is probably infinite. As far as most scientists can tell, there is no end. And having been there, I have to agree with them. What's more, the universe is also expanding, becoming even more infinite, if you can say so. In fact, the universe has expanded about 5 billion times since one second after the Big Bang. Be that as it may, in the near space around our planet, things are getting pretty crowded. Did you know? Around 1,800 operational satellites are up there right now, overlooking the world and its inhabitants. Also, it is estimated that well over 20,000 larger bits of space debris orbit around Earth. If you add the smaller bits, less than 10 centimeters in diameter. They amount to over half a million. And they travel at very high speeds. Space debris is a growing concern, and there has already been accidents. For example, in 2009, two dead satellites collided at 27,000 kilometers per hour, creating an enormous cloud of debris. 
given that we will have five times as many satellites in orbit in 10 years, it is likely to happen again. This poses the question, how can we safely launch spacecrafts and satellites in the future? Saab has the ambition to develop a ground-based space radar for identifying the positions of objects in orbit. Today, there are a few different catalogs of identified objects, but these have limitations of what data is accessible. We have the skill and knowledge to develop a new space surveillance radar that can make us even more sure of what surrounds us. This has several applications. The obvious one is to find debris and avoiding it when launching new objects into space and preventing collisions when in orbit. Another one is predicting objects re-entering the atmosphere, crashing down on Earth. But there is also another important purpose. This is a case of cybersecurity. You will be able to see when you are monitored. By surveying space, you can see any satellite that sees you. You can also see when a satellite is changing its trajectory. This will be increasingly important when protecting the integrity of people in an age when satellite monitoring systems are becoming more and more sophisticated. We at Saab have great experience in developing surveying systems, and we can build a fully functioning space radar in a cost-effective way. In fact, we have a demo version of a radar system like this that can be upscaled and sold commercially. So, a lot of things are happening in this field, and we see a lot of possibilities, both in the defense industries, but also in civil society. Many of our electronic devices and a large part of our wireless infrastructure is connected to satellites by the Internet of Things. If we have an escalating number of collisions among satellites, this will pose a threat to our connected lifestyle. Of course, our intent is that our space surveillance radar can be completely integrated with our other surveillance and security systems and platforms. For instance, our platform for satellite data we are developing. In combination, it will be a powerful tool for anyone who needs superior situational awareness on the ground and in space. Artificial intelligence is the order of the day. It is one of the things that can help us. Yes, we're talking about banditry, we talk about terrorism, we talk about a lot of things that ordinarily system can do. When we, when we talk about intelligence gathering, artificial intelligence can help us. Some of these chips, some of those equipment, some of these items can have artificial intelligence embedded in them so that at least we can have an enabling environment to thrive because without proper safety and peace in the nation, economy cannot thrive. And that is why we're doing this artificial intelligence on Tech Bridge today. For subsequent edition, just block your time for 1.30 p.m. on Tuesdays and you will have latest in the world of um, technology. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tony Alagoke. Bye. <laughs>